Now, this is an interesting topic and one I covered some years ago. Recently, one of my subscribers brought it back up to me and uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to re-examine Bill Wise's accounting of his 23 minutes in hell. Now, if you don't know who Bill Wise is, he's a professing Christian and author of more than 15 Christian related books. Now, my position on Bill Wise personally is that he's a false teacher. And in my opinion, he's one of the worst type of false teachers. He goes beyond twisting scripture. He actually adds to scripture by creating whole new narratives to fit his agenda. That's what he does. So let's hear from Bill Wise about his 23 minutes in hell. And I got up at three o'clock in the morning just to get a glass of water. And suddenly I was pulled out of my body, like being drawn up out of your body. And I found myself falling through the air down this long tunnel and it was getting hotter and hotter. And then I landed on a stone floor in an actual prison cell in hell. Rough hewn stone walls, bars, filthy, stinking, dirty prison cell, but like a dungeon. And I wondered, how did I get here? Why am I here? I was fully awake and cognizant. I looked up and I saw these two enormous beasts in the cell, these demons, reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all over the one's body, huge jaw, sunken in eyes, claws about a foot long, and they were pacing in the cell like a vicious, caged animal, and they had the most ferocious demeanor about them. They had an extreme hatred for God. They were blaspheming and cursing God, and then they had this hatred they directed towards me. The one picked me up, threw me into the wall of this prison cell. I hit the wall. I felt like bones had broken. Even though a spirit doesn't have bones, it felt that way. I collapsed on the floor and I wondered how could I be alive through this? Now the question is, can God give someone a vision of hell? Yes, he can. We know that God gave the Apostle Paul a vision in 2 Corinthians 12, 1. The, the prophet Isaiah also had an amazing experience in Isaiah 6. So yes, God has the authority and power to give a person a vision of heaven or hell. We know that. But here's the thing. If God were to truly give a person a vision of hell, one thing we know for sure is that it would be 100% in line with his word. It wouldn't contradict it. Okay? If God were giving someone a vision of heaven, for example, one thing we know for sure is that it would not contradict the account we find in Revelations 21 and 22. Now, when I first uploaded this rebuke of uh, Bill Wise some five years ago, people were telling me that I had no right to judge or criticize this man's experience. But that's absolutely ridiculous. Now, as believers, we must question and examine stories that we hear. We actually are commanded to 1 Thessalonians 5.21, but test everything and hold fast to what is good. Now, one of the things that Bill Wise said that stuck out to me was that he mentioned that in his interpretation of hell, the demons were guards, okay, that they were walking around and not only mocking him, but they were attacking him as well. Now, what does the Bible have to say about hell or who it's reserved for? Matthew 5, or I'm sorry, Matthew 25, 41 says, then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared, prepared for who? The devil and his angels. See, this is the huge misconception that a lot of people hold to. They believe that hell is this, is this arena for Satan. It's like, as though it's Satan's realm, that he controls it and that his demons are running around tormenting lost souls as though hell was Satan's wrath. But that makes absolutely no sense. Hell was created specifically for Satan and his angels. So do you know what that means? It means if you die in your sins and go to hell, it was as if you were Satan's angel. Okay, think about that. Okay, and it will not be demons that will be tormenting you. Okay, you along with the demons will be tormented by the flame that never goes out. Matthew 5, 22. But whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire, not danger of demons. Okay, isn't it amazing how the most godly and most biblical preachers of today never get the chance to experience such things, right? We never hear these stories from men like John MacArthur or, or R.C. Sproul or Vody Bauckham, okay? They don't have these type of experiences. For some reason, God always opens these experiences up to teachers that have, for the most part, incorrectly interpreted scripture. That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> the bottom line is, I believe Bill Wise came up with this story to sell books, okay? And that's exactly what he did. This man has earned millions of dollars off of a lie. The problem is he will have to answer for that lie on the day of judgment or instruments of apostasy. Look at verse two, by means of the hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron. You need to understand something. I don't want to exalt my place or exalt the place of a preacher, but I want to tell you something. As God uses men to advance his kingdom through the proclamation of the truth, so the devil uses men 
to advance his cause against the kingdom of Christ. Now, I want, to, I want you to notice something from the book of Acts, that whenever the kingdom is advancing, it's because the word of God is being proclaimed. You want to advance the kingdom? Proclaim, proclaim, proclaim the truth. But you need to understand that there are two lines on this battlefield, and one line has men of truth. They are men of truth, not by their own virtue or merit, but the election, the sovereignty, the grace of God. They are men of truth, and they must stand with the truth and stop playing games like little boys and devote themselves to know the truth and to proclaim it. And then on this side, there is another line, and they are proclaimers of lies frivolity, maybe even good things, but not the best things of God. Now, it says that they're liars because they do not speak the truth. Now, what does that mean? They do not speak according to what is written, and therefore they prove that they have no dawn. Young man, when you get up in the pulpit, no one needs to hear from your heart. They need to hear from God's Word. If you go on the mission field, let me share with you something. Someone called me years ago and said, I want to come to the mission field. And I said, why? I just want to give my life away. I said, young man, no one here in Peru needs your life. They need the Word of God proclaimed to them. Liars. They are liars because they do, not they do not speak according to what is written. They are hypocritical because they pretend to have a spirituality that is from God, but in actuality, at best, their spirituality is carnal or natural, and at worst, it's demonic. Now, again, how do you know if one's spirituality is from God? Because it conforms to what is written. 